In this video, we're going to look at the topic of compound interest. So whenever a bank charges or pays compound interest, that means every time interest is applied, it's applied on the entire balance of the account. Let's look at an example of what that means. So consider a bank account that starts with one uh, that earns 1% compound interest each month, starting with a balance of $500. So what happens? The first time we calculate interest, there's a balance of $500. 1% of $500 is $5. And so that interest gets added to the starting balance, creating a new balance of $505. Now, the next time we calculate interest, we start with $505, not $500, which means when we compute 1% of that, it's not $5 again, this time it's $5.05 because we're calculating 1% of the new balance, not just the original balance. So we add 1% of the new balance to that balance, giving us a total of $510.05. So that's what we mean by compounding. Interest is being applied to the entire thing, including any previously earned interest. So how do we describe the interest that's accruing? Typically, a bank will advertise an annual rate of interest. And then you might have to read the fine print in order to find the compounding frequency. So that's how often interest is compounded each year. Once you know both of those things, you're going to be able to figure out how much interest you're actually getting. So for example, if the bank advertises an annual rate of 12% compounded monthly, what that actually means is they're going to take that 12% and divide it evenly over each compounding period. Now there are 12 months in a year, so they will, they will take this 12% and divide it by 12 giving you 1% each month. So it's not really 12% each year, it's 1% each month. And that works out differently because later months in the year will be uh, accruing interest on all the previously earned interest. And that makes balances increase a little bit faster than they otherwise would. On the other hand, let's suppose that you read the fine print and it says that the interest is compounded daily. This is typical with most accounts actually, uh, to use daily compounding. Then a 12% annual rate actually means the bank takes that advertised number of 12, divides it evenly across the number of days, and gives you the quotient there, 0.0329% each day. Um, banks will also use 365 every year, even in leap years. So the number of times interest is applied each year is called the compounding frequency. And if we use the symbol M to represent that, then we can say if you're doing monthly compounding, then you're compounding 12 times per year. If you're doing daily compounding, then the frequency is 365 times per year. If you apply interest quarterly, once every quarter, meaning once every quarter of a year, then your compounding frequency four times per year. And semi-annually would be once every six months, every half year, so that would be twice per year. Once you know those things, you can calculate the so-called periodic interest rate, how much money you get each time you get interest. So we will abbreviate the periodic interest rate as I and the annual rate by R in order to tell them apart. So in order to calculate the periodic rate I, you do what we've been describing. We take the annual rate that's advertised and divide it by how many times interest is applied each year. 
So for example, if you have an annual rate that's advertised as 6% compounded four times per year, you take 6% divided by four, and that's how much interest is applied each period, 1.5% each quarter. The starting balance of an account is called the principal balance. And we will, den we will denote that by the letter P. We'll use B to represent the balance at some other time. So as time goes on, as years pass and the account accrues interest, B changes. So you can really think of B as a function of time, a function of T. Although a lot of times we'll, we'll just write the letter B by itself to represent that function. What we're going to do next is try to find a formula for the balance after t years when we know other things, when we know how much money we started with and the annual advertised rate and how often interest is being compounded. So let's say we start with a principal of p dollars and we add interest. We take the periodic interest rate i and multiply the principal by that. This tells you how much interest you're going to add to the original balance. From this expression, you could simplify it. If you remember that there is a hidden one here, one times p, then you can factor the p out and rewrite this as p times one plus i. That's the balance after you give interest one time. What happens after you give interest again? So after a second period of applying interest, you take the balance that you had and you multiply that by one plus i to represent adding interest a second time. So every time you add interest, you're really multiplying by one plus i again. So that means after two periods, you've multiplied by one plus i twice, so you're balance will be the principal times 1 plus i squared. After a third period, you'll take that balance to add interest. You can represent that by multiplying that balance by 1 plus i again, resulting in the expression p times 1 plus i quantity cubed. And if you do this over and over, after k periods of applying interest, your balance will be the principal you started with multiplied by 1 plus i raised to the k, where k is how many periods have elapsed. So if your compounding frequency is m, you're giving interest m times per year. And if you do that for t years, the total number of periods that pass will be m times t. For example, if you compound quarterly, that would be 4 times per year. If you do that for 10 years, you'll have given interest 40 times. So if we plug that in for k, the number of compounding periods, it, that becomes the new exponent, m times t. So this expression represents the balance. If you add in, in uh, periodic interest rate of i, m times t many periods. All right, let's summarize that. This is called the compound interest formula. There are actually two ways to write it, so we'll call them uh, two compound interest formulas. This is the one we just came up with, and if we remember that the periodic interest rate i is obtained from taking the annual rate and dividing it by the compounding frequency, then you can also write this in the form here, the balance after t years is p, sorry there's a missing p here, times 1 plus r over m raised to the mt. So p represents the balance after t years, uh, b represents the balance after t years, m is the compounding frequency, r is the annual interest rate, i is the periodic interest rate, and p is the principal.